Welcome to the Power of Purity podcast, the show that empowers men to experience their sexual gift in a healthier way. Now here's your host, Tony Ingrassia. Hey guys, welcome back to the Power of Purity podcast. I'm glad that you're with me today, and I do pray that this episode will be a blessing to you as you continue to move forward with God's grace and mercy, which are very powerful, on the healing path and the path of purity that God has intended for your heart and your life and your marriage. And I do pray that as we continue to move forward together, that this podcast finds you in a good place in your heart and in your life and in your relationship with God and even in your relationship with your sexual self. I pray that you are remembering and practicing some of the key principles of the power of purity that we've explored and discovered together and talked about over the course of these various podcast episodes. For example, I pray that you're choosing to continue to be in the battle, that you're not dropping out of the battle or going easy, that you're staying engaged in the battle for your own sexual purity. I pray that you're remembering the high price of pornography and that therefore you're being empowered to resist the temptations to give in and to look at porn. I pray that if you're married, that you're continuing to be committed to the sexual alliance that you've established with your wife when you made the decision before God and your wife to commit the expression of your sexual gift 100% without exception exclusively to your wife, that your body, your penis, your orgasm, your sexual gift belongs in the context of your marriage only. So I pray that you are remembering that and that you're committed to the sexual alliance with your wife and that you're practicing that. And I pray that you're working on some of the key relationships in your heart and life, that you're nurturing your relationship with God, because as we've learned, that's going to be at the epicenter of your walk of purity. It's going to be hard enough to be a man of purity with God on your side, let alone trying to do it without the Lord. So our relationship with him is of preeminence. And I pray that you're remembering and practicing the principles that we've learned about our relationship with our own physical body, that we live in our body, and our body holds tremendous power over us, and that a huge part of our battle for sexual purity is going to have something to do with us learning to manage and control our body instead of being managed by and controlled by our body. And in addition, our walk of purity is going to have something to do with our relationship with our will, or what I like to call our relationship with our no muscle. We're going to have to exercise that no muscle because we're going to be subjected to almost never-ending constant and perpetual temptation over and over and over again. So we're going to have to say no, 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 over and over again. So guys, I just pray that you've been exercising your no muscle and that your no muscle is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. I pray that you're nurturing and pursuing your relationship with your wife and you're cultivating the kind of relational environment that's going to make it possible for intimacy to bloom and to prosper in the context of your relationship because your wife is your best friend and you're pursuing her and you're courting her and you're dating her and you're not taking her for granted and you're investing in that relationship accordingly. And I pray that this podcast episode as we begin finds you in a good place in your relationship with your brothers in Christ. Because another important lesson that we've learned is that purity is not a solo sport. Purity is a team sport. It's like football. 
Imagine if there was a football team with only one player. So this guy goes out on the field, he's facing the opposing team, and here he is, one man trying to play the game all by himself. I just believe that God was smart when he set this thing up, and God intends for us to be in community with other brothers in Christ and to learn to live in a place of honesty and transparency and vulnerability and to be in community with some brothers who are fellow strugglers and we're on this journey together and it makes purity that much more possible when we make it a community event. So guys, I could just go on and on and on naming different aspects of the walk of purity, different things we've talked about over the course of the podcast, but I just hope that you continue to remember these things and reflect on these things and hold on to these things and practice these things because all of them contribute to helping us be the men of purity that God has called us to be. And with that being said, I'm just kind of sitting here thinking and talking out loud, but it brings us to today's episode where we continue our present series, which I've entitled 12 Things Every Wife Should Know About Her Husband When It Comes to Sex. And we have now covered the first five of those 12 principles. And in the way of quick review, the first five principles were these. Number one, your husband gets tempted in this highly sexualized world. Number two, your husband's body has a sexual rhythm. Number three, it's hard for your husband to live without sex. Number four, your husband would like you to have sex with him. And number five, your husband would like you to want to have sex with him. And that therefore brings us to principle six, where we continue today. And principle six is this. Your husband would like you to initiate sex with him on occasion. And let me just say and acknowledge that many of these points that I'm sharing will be complementary to one another. And in a very real way, I think that this point is very complementary to the previous point that we covered last week, which was principle number five your husband would like you to want to have sex with him. Simply because if you really wanted to have sex with your husband, you would probably initiate sex with your husband, at least occasionally, and wouldn't it be true that said initiation would therefore demonstrate to your husband that you really wanted to have sex with him, and therefore that's why you're initiating. And with that being said, I do want to acknowledge an important reality that exists in most marriages, I might advocate virtually every marriage, and that is the reality that there's typically a higher sexed person and a lower sexed person in every marriage. Or said another way, there's almost always one person who'd like to have more sex than the other person. And it's just as true that the higher sexed person is typically the person who ends up initiating sex most of the time, which makes perfect sense, since they're the one who wants sex most of the time, that they will probably be the one who initiates sex most of the time. And this is, in fact, the way it is in my marriage. And since I'm the one who's the higher sexed person in my marriage, I also end up being the one who ends up initiating sex most of the time. But with that being said, it does not mean that the lower sexed person cannot also initiate sex, at least on occasion. And as previously mentioned, if it's true that the lower sex person also wants to have sex with their spouse, then it makes perfect sense that they would also initiate sex, at least on occasion. And of course, I can only speak for me but I do suspect that most men would feel very similar to the way that I feel about this, that marriage is intended to be a two-way street, both give and take, and I would not like the situation or be comfortable with the situation 
if I had to be the one to initiate sex every single time that sex occurred in my relationship. And if this was the case, I think I'd inevitably end up having thoughts and feelings and maybe insecurities and suspicions such as these. Does my wife really want to have sex with me? Or is she just doing it because she has to do it? How come she never initiates sex with me? Because it seems like if she really wanted to have sex, that she'd initiate at least once in a while. Does she really want to have sex with me? Or is she just going along to get along? Or maybe this. Since we basically never have sex unless I initiate sex, it makes me wonder if you'd be just fine if we never had sex at all. Because if we only had sex as often as you initiate sex, we'd basically never have sex because you never initiate. So what's the deal with that? And as you guys may already know, I interviewed a woman named Shanti Feldhahn on the podcast, episodes 106 and 107, which I highly encourage you to listen to if you haven't heard those two episodes yet. But Shanti is a best-selling author, and she wrote a book entitled For Women Only, What You Need to Know About the Inner Lives of Men. And that book of Shanti's has sold over 2 million copies in 21 different languages worldwide. So it's a very popular best-selling book. And Shanti is quite an expert in the field of relationships and marriage and sexuality in the context of marriage. And Shanti shares several interesting observations about women initiating sex in this book. And she says that when a woman initiates sex, it deeply comforts and affirms her husband. And I have no doubt that that's absolutely true. And in addition, she goes on to say that she was stunned when she was researching and interviewing men for this book that she discovered that the average man's most emotionally vulnerable moment is when he approaches his wife for sexual intimacy because the average man feels exceptionally vulnerable extending his unprotected heart to his wife, not knowing if, using Shanti's words, whether she'll tenderly embrace it or smack it down. So the bottom line on this point, ladies, just trust me, is that your husband really wants you to initiate sex with him. And let me just say that this makes perfect sense to me, not only because of my own experience, but as already mentioned, if a man's sexuality really is at the epicenter of his very personhood and his masculinity and identity, then offering himself to his wife sexually can be pretty risky business because if he's rejected on that level, He's being rejected at the deepest level that he could ever be rejected, and that risk and that possibility has a way of making a guy feel pretty vulnerable. And I think that's why, as Shanti Feldhahn identifies, that when a woman does initiate sex, it deeply comforts and affirms her husband, because the opposite principle must be just as true which means that when a woman wants to have sex with her husband and even initiates sex with her husband, that he's being accepted and comforted and affirmed. And I think this is true because when a woman initiates sex with her husband, that basically it makes him feel that he's being accepted by his wife, he's comforted, he's affirmed, he's being approved, at the deepest levels of his personhood and his masculinity and his identity. And doesn't it just make sense that that would be a pretty big ego boost and a pretty effective aphrodisiac, whether you're a man or a woman, and you know that someone's attracted to you enough and desires you enough to make the first move and to initiate. So when you initiate sex with your husband, it's almost as if you're saying to him, I'm not just doing this because I have to do it, 
And I'm not just doing it because it's an obligation. And I'm not just doing it because you want to do it. But I'm doing it because I want to do it. And that's why I'm initiating. And I'm doing it because I'm attracted to you and because you're important to me and because I really enjoy being close to you and because I really like having sex with you. And I'm not just doing it because you need to do it with me. I'm doing it because I need to do it with you and I want to do it with you. So just realize, ladies, that men like to be pursued too. Every relationship can be a two-way street, and it's a huge turn-on for a man when his wife initiates sex with him. And in fact, I discovered a survey that was conducted around this issue of women initiating sex with their husband, and not one single man had any negative response to the idea of his wife initiating sex. And in fact, here's what several different men said when they were asked if they like it when their wife initiates sex with them. One man said, I'm completely in favor of it. Another man said, the world would be a better place if this happened more often. Another man said, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread. Wait, I'm sorry, it's greater than sliced bread. Another man said, I think when a woman initiates sex, it's hot. Another man said, I'm completely in favor of it. Please ask for what you want when you want it. Another man said, it's a good thing. Another man said, when she initiates, I feel like I'm one of the luckiest men to be alive. Another man said, it works for me. Another man said, I think the word I'm looking for is wahoo, or said another way, based upon the responses of these men, men love it when their wives initiate sex with them. And if I had to pick a proof text here, I think I'd choose a passage from the Song of Songs, also known as the Song of Solomon, when the young bride makes known her passionate desire toward her lover in no uncertain terms, and please understand that this particular passage is the wife speaking to her husband and conveying her desire and her passion and her longing for her husband. Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 9 through 13, May the wine go straight to my beloved, flowing gently over lips and teeth, I belong to my beloved, and his desire is for me. Come, my beloved, let us go to the countryside. Let us spend the night in the villages. Let us go early to the vineyards to see if the vines have budded, if their blossoms have opened, and if the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes send out their fragrance, and at our door is every delicacy, both new and old that I have stored up for you, my love. And wow, it sounds to me like she's pretty much initiating toward her husband. And I'd like to share just one last thought with you guys and one last idea before we finish this particular point, which is, again, your husband needs you to initiate sex with him, at least on occasion. And the thought is this. I know that in nature... The male is typically the aggressor, and it's almost always the male who's pursuing the female. And in addition, I think it's true that women tend to be responders more than initiators. So I guess what I'm saying, ladies, is that it's okay if your husband initiates more than you do. And I'm not saying that you should be the one to initiate all the time, but I do think it's very important to your husband and to your marriage, that you initiate at least some of the time and don't leave the responsibility completely 100% on your husband to do so. And in view of that, in order for you to initiate some of the time, you might have to work on stretching your comfort zone, and you might have to work on deliberately, purposely, thoughtfully, intentionally initiating sexual intimacy with your husband. 
and if you'd be willing to do so, I sincerely believe that your effort will accrue to the benefit of your relationship with your husband and your marriage. And my last idea is this, and I'm just kind of throwing this in for free, but you know, I did a podcast series earlier that was entitled The Sexual Alliance, and I talked about how every couple has to find a sexual rhythm that works for them. So, for example, if one person in the relationship would like to have sex every single day and one person would like to have sex only once a month, if even that often, it's this disparity that can often lead to tremendous hurt and confusion and anger and disorientation in a relationship. So what this couple has to do is find a kind of sexual rhythm that works for them together Because if he gets sex every single day, she's not going to be happy. And if he gets sex only once a month, then he's not going to be happy. So what they have to be willing to do, if they're sincerely committed to each other and to the welfare of their marriage and to this concept of the sexual alliance and to sexual exclusivity, is they're going to have to move toward one another and figure out a compromise and a sexual rhythm that can work for the two of them together. So in this case, they might decide, for example, that they're going to have sex once a week, which means that he's going to have to really stretch himself because he'd like to get sex every day. But dude, you have to accept the reality that you're not going to get sex every day because that's not who your wife is. But it also means that the woman, in my example, is going to have to really stretch also because she'd prefer to have sex just once a month. But dude, you've got to accept the fact that once a month isn't going to work for your husband. So she's going to have to stretch to try to move toward her husband and toward the possibility of an alliance where they can have sex maybe once a week. But the point I'm getting to here, guys, is this. In the same spirit of the working cooperation that's necessary for a couple to forge their sexual alliance and their sexual rhythm, what if a couple applied the same intention toward this idea of initiating sex with each other? So it might look like this. If a couple decides their sexual rhythm is going to be one time per week, they could set up a kind of initiation rotation where they basically say, okay, The husband will initiate this week, which means he can initiate sex at any time during the next seven days of the week, Monday through Sunday. Then the next week will be the wife's turn to initiate, which means she can initiate sex at any time during the next seven days of her week, Monday through Sunday. And in so doing, both partners will have the opportunity to initiate toward one another on their corresponding week. It's just an idea. It's just food for thought. Or maybe if it's a given that the husband is the higher sex partner and he typically initiates more often, maybe you guys could agree or maybe the wife would consider the possibility of accepting the challenge to say, I'm going to try to initiate toward my husband at least once a month because I know that that's something that's important to him and it's something appropriate in the context of our marriage. So with all that being said, I'd like to conclude this point with four questions for the ladies. And the first question is this, when was the last time you initiated sex with your husband? Question two, how often do you initiate sex with your husband? Question three, have you ever initiated sex with your husband? And question four, are you willing to start initiating sex with your husband? And those questions are just food for thought, and I do pray that you will seriously consider those questions and think about them. And maybe for the sake of clarity, I'll just go ahead and review those questions one more time. Question one was this. When was the last time you initiated sex with your husband? Question two, 
How often do you initiate sex with your husband? Question three, have you ever initiated sex with your husband? And question four, are you willing to start initiating sex with your husband? I'm just thinking out loud right now, but a fifth question is occurring to me as I review these questions. A fifth question maybe would be this. Do you think that if you initiated toward your husband, that that would be important to him? Do you think that he would appreciate that if you would be willing to initiate toward him at least on occasion? And with that said, you guys, it brings me to the conclusion of principle six of the 12 things that every wife should know about her husband when it comes to sex. And you know what that means, guys? It means that we are now halfway through the 12 principles because we just concluded principle number six, which means we now have six more principles to go. And I see from the clock that we're basically out of time for this particular episode, so I certainly don't have time to open principle number seven, so we will save that for next week. I trust you'll be able to come back and join me then. But in the way of quick review, we've now covered the first six principles of the 12 things every wife should know about her husband when it comes to sex, and those six principles are these. Principle one, your husband gets tempted in this highly sexualized world. Principle two, your husband's body has a sexual rhythm. Principle three, it's hard for your husband to live without sex. Principle four, your husband would like you to have sex with him. Principle five, your husband would like you to want to have sex with him. And principle six, your husband would like you to initiate sex with him on occasion. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode. And as I close this episode today, I don't know why. I don't really want to say like a prayer, but it's just in my heart for some reason to speak a blessing or a kind of benediction over you today as we finalize this episode. So I just want to say, in Jesus' name, I pray for the light of God over you. I pray for the light of God over your life, over your physical body, over your sexual gift, over your marriage, over your family, over your children, over your job, your finances, your health, over your physical possessions, every single thing about your life. I pray for the light of God in your life. I pray for the truth of God. I pray for the mercies of God over you. I pray for the grace of God over you, flowing like a mighty waterfall, just flowing and cascading over your life and your marriage and your home and your situation. I pray for the healing of God over you. I pray for the forgiveness of God. I pray for the redemption of God. I pray for the salvation of God. And I pray for the blood of Jesus over your life, over your heart, over your marriage, and every single aspect of your life in Jesus' name. So guys, thanks a lot for being with me for today's episode of the Power of Purity podcast. I pray that it has been helpful and a blessing and an encouragement to you, and I just encourage you guys to continue to move forward on the pathway of purity that God has for you this week. Remember that it's only one day at a time, right? If we think about being men of purity, it's overwhelming to think, how can I be a man of purity for the next year? I don't know if I can do that. How can I do it for a month? or even a week. But you know what? You don't have to worry about that. Matthew 6 says, tomorrow will take care of itself. All we have is today. So guys, it's one day at a time. It's one hour at a time. It's one minute at a time. It's one decision at a time. And you know what I believe? I believe with all my heart that you can be a man of purity for the next hour. You can Through the grace, the mercy, the power, the strength, the wisdom, the healing of God, you can be a man of purity the next hour. 
you have the resources of God available to you, and you will be a man of purity the next hour. And when you come to the end of that hour, then just start over and just go ahead and be a man of purity for another hour. And then when you get to the end of that hour, just go ahead and start over and be a man of purity for another hour and walk that out throughout your day. And at the end of the day, you will have honored God with the expression of your sexual gift. You will have honored your wife with the expression of your sexual gift. And then tomorrow you're going to wake up and you're going to do the same thing. And we're going to learn to walk this thing out minute by minute, hour by hour, day by day, week by week. And we're going to be the men of purity that God has called us to be. Praise be to God. So with that said, guys, I'm going to sign off. Thanks for being here today. I'll look forward to seeing you next week back here at the Power of Purity podcast, where we will continue with principle seven of the 12 things that every wife should know about her husband when it comes to sex. I'll look forward to seeing you then. In the meantime, have a blessed week, have a blessed day, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye now. Thanks for listening. Visit powerofpurity.org for more resources and information. And if this podcast has been helpful or encouraging, please invite a friend to listen. Until next time, remember... There's power in purity.